Welcome to Lake Forest, California, and uh, with me I have Danny. Danny is a producer for Fox Sports and a program called Angler, Angler Chronicles. Chronicles. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing it, Danny? Uh, about 12 years now. And he's been uniquely flying drones, uh, and unfortunately when he's sunk them, he's come to me to try to look at the Mariner. So what we're going to do, since uh, many people have asked me, uh, how do we make this thing a little bit more robust? How do we solve some of the problems uh, inherent in the first basic unit? It's an excellent unit. I call it a, a DJI Phantom on steroids. So we're going to go into it, and Danny is going to ask me any questions and stop me if I go too fast. Okay? Okay, that's fine. I'm ready to go, Joe. Let's, let's okay. do it. Let's look at the original Mariner where it came out of the factory. The uh, the mold then is a two-piece mold. Uh, it actually has an O-ring that sets around the margin of it. The screws on the bottom of it are all stainless steel and they actually have O-ring seals on each one of them. This is an insert for a platform on the bottom. Okay, so having a completely sealed Mariner, uh, we use special motors that uh, are, have uh, ceramic bearings onto them and of course they can't be completely non-ferrous because they need neodymium magnets but they are very corrosion resistance resistant and if you do get them in salt water for extended period uh, you just hose them off in fresh water and then spray some corrosion x which i'm sure danny is familiar with they use it on fishing yes. reels uh, the wires for the ESC go down through here and it may look deceptive like there's a hole but there's actually a double o-ring pad inside here that protects all this so this whole section is completely waterproof in here the top then is a clear plexiglass plate with four inserted screws and if we look in the inside of this you can see there is a metal bracket on the inside a raised bracket on four nylon dials about an inch and a quarter high this is usually where the DJI NASA controller is placed underneath. And this is one of the problems we'll talk about uh, and a solution to that. The way that it was originally set up is the receiver, the NASA receiver, would, uh, uh, would actually go inside, or in this case, the Devco 7 receiver. Now, if you have a receiver inside and you have two antennas, think about where you're going to put the antennas. You're going to put the antennas right down here along the side and probably tape them in there. Well, the disadvantage is if you are on your transmitting antenna and you're transmitting his antennas like this, and of course your receive antennas are at 90 degrees, you lose a heck of a lot of a signal. And we were finding that happening. Plus the fact that if the antennas are buried down in here, there's so much copper wires with high voltage coming through there that there was a lot of interference. But really, the worst thing all was the fact that if the antennas are down here and the mariner does set in water, remember, water is not conductive or conducive to the transmission of 2.4 gigahertz. So it totally blocks the signal. You can get GPS signal about a half an inch underwater and it goes away, which is 2.4 gigahertz. So the idea of having the antennas inside was completely wrought with problems. And it's something that uh, I had to do a lot of engineering to, to work with. Okay. Now, the Mariner is, as I say, a DJ on steroids. The engines are probably three times more powerful. Instead of a small ESCs of 15 to 20 amps, these are 40 amp opto ESCs, Simon K flashed. So the whole unit is heavy duty. We're running 4S rather than 3S, 12 inch props rather than 10 inch props. But with that, we have a tremendous amount of power. And unfortunately, in the factory setup, we were limited by battery arrangements. The typical battery that was provided was a 2500 4S, again the DJIs are going 3S, we're going 4S, 2500 25C battery. Now that was extremely difficult to fit in here because you had this NASA plate back here and um, getting it in uh, actually blocked a lot of the uh, the uh, transmission wires for the diversity antenna of the receiver. So we really weren't doing ourselves a lot of favor with that. Now, you could go up to a 33 or 3400, and that was the maximum that you can fit in. Now, this really never made sense to me. So one of the first things I did is I modified the Mariner by removing this center plate. 
Okay, now that's easy to do. There's just four screws taking out of the top back plate. And then what you do is take a Dremel tool or a pair of little uh, snips and then snip the white legs off to the side. Uh, you won't do any damage to that. So what that leaves you with is a nice flat bottom. So basically you've converted this into an empty cavity with the wires for the controllers appropriately setting up the legs. Now with this empty cavity, one of the reasons is now, now instead of putting a small battery in, we can put in twin 5,200 milliamp hour North Stars batteries. Now just to give you an idea of battery power, this produces 150 watt hours of power. Now let's compare that to a DJI. The batteries on the DJI put about 55 or so watt hours of power in. So we're running three times as much power. But both of these batteries combined, two of them, are $100. So if you look at the total cost in terms of energy density, using these batteries to power a Mariner is one-sixth, one-sixth the energy cost of the equivalent battery for the same energy density in a Phantom II. So that makes sense. Batteries are expensive, they wear out, and now you have very good flexibility. But with that, you get increased operational time. These two batteries in here, as you'll see from my YouTube, give us a 32-minute continuous flight. And we verified that several times. Okay, so our one modification then is to actually put more battery power in the inside. The second modification has really to do with the uh, antenna configuration. So let's take a look at that. Okay, we're back looking at modifications and uh, this uh, demo unit actually represents the antenna modifications. If you get on any of the drone sites, you'll notice that the common configuration is a V arrangement of the dipole antennas at about a 30 to 45 degree angle looking sideways. This is the optimum transmitter uh, receiver antenna placement uh, on any particular type of drone. So we've taken advantage of that. Now because we want it waterproof we obviously just can't stick the antennas out. So what I've done is I've taken the uh, acrylic port that fits on the top of it through an o-ring seal and I've actually machined some special uh, rods. These are polyethylene rods so they're highly flexible with a cap on the top they're sealed. So by drilling the appropriate hole in there, tight fitting hole, they're actually bonded then through, uh, through a special adhesive. So our antenna wires actually come up on the inside. Now in this case I've got the GPS antenna mounted in the center. On the stock mariners they mount it inside way off to the left or off to the right. For optimum operation the GPS should be exactly in the center as well as the NASA flight control system. So in my new arrangement I was able to accomplish that and the results well they're nothing short of spectacular in terms of stability. So let's open the top and see what I've done on the inside. So we have our two 5,200 milliamp hour batteries onto it and what we can do is put a Y connector in there or simply solder another connector. So you know I have two connector leads uh, going to my main battery distribution and then of course they mate with the two for the battery. Uh, the Mariner itself has a uh, an indicator lighting system on the bottom of it. So this simply plugs in one of the uh, battery charging terminals and the lights will illuminate down the bottom giving you both orientation, low battery, and a few other status type things. Now, you'll notice since the NASA flight control system is not in the inside, we had to come up with a good place for it. And I think the best place is underneath the lid. And then notice how easy that is now to get out the batteries. We're not bunching anything around, we're not twisting batteries, we're not tugging anything. It's uh, very, very convenient because with the batteries low in this case, the NASA controller then just sits right in the middle. So. For simplicity, all I've done is added a little bit of double-sided sticky, but you can use Velcro or anything like that. I would probably not recommend Velcro because you want this thing exactly on the center. Now, how can you be sure that when you put it on there, it's going to be on the center? Well, 
remember we have these two red arrows indicating our forward position. On the top of the Mariner, I simply put an arrow. You can put a red line or whatever you want. And the reason why it indexes so perfectly is we have four locking screws on the margins of this to seal down our waterproof cover. But in sealing this waterproof cover, it actually assures absolutely perfect alignment of the flight control system as well as the NASA GPS. Now, I have the NASA GPS unit exposed and it goes through a, a, a little o-ring seal, seal with a placking, packing gland on there. Now, uh, if you're doing this in salt water, yes, there's some stainless steel screws on the bottom so you could coat them uh, with a little bit of um, adhesive. Uh, or if you want to be really good, a thing that I use a lot is either a balloon or a condom. So put it over it and tie it on the end and lo and behold, you're not going to get any water in. Okay. So, let's flip it around and take a look at it. You can see how all the wiring comes in, and I'll explain that a little bit later. The wiring then comes in from the four ESCs. This is a, a bus system, so one comes in from the transmitter of the NASA. There's a GPS line and an LED line coming into the receiver. So what you're looking at in the back is the receiver mounted here, and the dipole antennas, as you see through these two gold connectors, go up right inside my polyethylene tubes. So it's a nice, convenient, self-contained package. Uh, for those of you in the professional field, it wouldn't be that expensive to have a spare like this if something did happen, and you just plug it in and play. Okay? There'd be no taking apart anything at all. It's just a one-shot type unit connected with it.